This is relevant to the recent aerial rescue um, event that I did at uh, Legend of the Geezers. And I was, I kind of messed it up. But anyway, I wanted to demonstrate. What I did is I didn't pull it up far enough. But um, I wanted to demonstrate what I have um, made. This is RIT Cordage. It's uh, eight millimeter. It's rated at 5,400 pounds. And what I've done is I've tied it onto an aluminum ring with a scaffold knot. And then I've backed it up with a double overhand knot. And then on this side, this is um, super glue that keeps it very stiff. So that if this ever gets non-taunt or it doesn't, you know, in other words, it's not set real hard, it makes it really hard for that tail to ever pull through. So it's really, it's really secure and it needs to be secure because a basal anchor is going to be unattended while you're up in the tree. I seldom climb with a basal anchor, but I find them very useful for uh, rescue. If you were gonna set a line and there was nothing set, um, a basal anchor is about as quick as anything can be uh, with some of the things that I'm gonna show in this video. Um, so this is about 30 feet of this stuff. So a lot of times in aerial rescue, you're required to use their access line. And that could be kind of liberal. There was a guy in our comp who um, pulled out a ladder. <laughs> it was really funny. Oh, it was great, but he pulled out a ladder and then he used this to help himself balance as he went up the ladder. Now, I don't know if ISA would go along with that in a ISA comp. I think they would probably say they're not really using the access line. Anyway, so you have to use the access line. The access line is usually a line that's got a splice anchor, spliced end, sitting on the ground, and then it's got the rest of it all flaked out. So, um, prior to the event, if you wanted to estimate how long this is, needs to be, you can estimate the diameter right there, and then of course take one, two, three of them, and this is where I'm going to tie my scaffold knot and notice that I have my carabiner on my pinky over here and I'm going to leave it on my pinky and that helps me orient it. So when I tie my scaffold knot, the carabiner is where I want the load to be connected. That's why I connect it. That's why I hang on to it with my pinky right there. It helps me keep that oriented. If you tie the scaffold knot facing the wrong direction, it'll come undone. So it's important that you always have a stopper knot on your sling right there. So I wrap my thumb and that's my knot right there, right? So I've already tied this. Now I can come up to the tree and I go, okay, there's my tree. Now I don't have to tie my scaffold knot. I come up, I take my scaffold knot and I put it through Anything you can do prior to the event is going to save you some time. So, um, the other advantage to having the ring is there's much less friction. If it was uh, a bowlin or alpine butterfly or whatever, there's more friction there. The less friction you have without side loading a pulley or something provides more cinch. And the cinch is important whenever this gets pulled. You want this to really cinch on the tree so that it doesn't slide up the tree, right? So again, now I have my um, knot right here and I should have done this before, but um, I'm gonna pull my climbing line. So take your their spliced end, I'll connect that to my climbing line right here and so that is ready to just get pulled up into the tree right so that goes up and then I have my system right here and I should have done this but I let it go up and then it ended up short so there's I figure that's about the height that I'm gonna have this anchor at I don't want to go over now I just take all I've done is an overhand knot Fairly soft, supple. This is some friction cord. Um, 
soft supple something that makes it easy so that that can pull through and then to make it fast it just has an overhand knot or a slippery overhand knot and then it comes out and there's there's my system ready for me to go on now to finish this you'll have to tie a midline scaffold knot again notice where my pinky is on this carabiner right there so I grabbed the midline this is some pretty stiff um, rope right now so that pulls through and again my pinky is holding my carabiner now when as soon as I put that on that'll cinch down and now I have cinched that anchor and this whatever whatever your climbing system is this is now ready for me to go up the tree I have the rest of my climbing line on um, I like to keep a secondary system at the other end of my climbing line so that when I get up there if I need a second system to bring the victim down then I can do that so uh, take a look and see if that makes some sense notice this carabiner is not cross-loaded it's midline it's a good anchor um, might bring that around a little more if you wanted so that it's got a better better angle on it but that's certainly a cinched anchor and suitable for now remember to consider your double load your quadrupled load or whatever if you're going to go up and rescue someone